Uh, Senator Sinema. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, Mr. Dodaro, for being here today. You know, Arizonans expect and demand a government that's efficient, effective, responsive, and transparent. And the GAO report helps Congress identify areas to improve efficiencies and eliminate redundancies within the federal government. And it under, helps us understand the progress or lack of progress in areas that go. the GAO has previously identified. So GAO's work and the duplication report are important for everyone in Arizona who wants a better, better federal government. I'm interested in some of the recommendations for the Departments of Defense and Veterans Affairs. Men and women who serve in uniform made a commitment to protect our country, and in return, we promise to provide them with the best care and support. I intend to honor that promise. Uh, the report recommends that the Defense Health Agency improve how it tracks instances where patients are or could have been harmed. Understanding these events is very important to improving medical services and patient safety. Did GAO look at how other federal health care providers like the VA or Indian Health Service track instances where patients are put at risk or harmed? Uh, no, we were focused on DOD at that time. Okay. So there's no way then to track, to understand how DOD's tracking protocols compare to other federal health care providers? Uh, well, there is a way to do it. I mean, we'd be happy to take a look at, at doing that in the future, but for this particular engagement, we did not look at that. We were focused on the DOD solely since it's a, such a large operation as well. But what we found, though, I mean, it, it's pretty well established practice when you have these sentinel events, which are, could cause an unexpected death or a very serious or psychological problem that there be a root cause analysis done of what the problem is, that that be coordinated. What we found is that they were doing the root cause analysis, but within each service. And so it was very stovepiped activity. So nobody had to, to look across the board to see, okay, are we having a systemic problem here? Is there something that we need to change? So it's a fundamental kind of analytical uh, approach that's, that's well established and used. And what we found was about 9% of the root cause analysis weren't, weren't even being uh, you know, in a system. They didn't have a system. They would send this through emails and other things. And so it really wasn't organized properly. Mm, thank you. So what processes are in place to share information about these events and lessons that are learned across the health care provider agencies? Yeah, right now, they, each, age, each service keeps their own information. And then they, they try to share it. Eventually, they're in a transition now where the Defense Health Agency is supposed to take over administration of a lot of the uh, central management of the uh, uh, DOD medical treatment facilities. And uh, so, but, but right now, they don't have a system that takes all the information from the services and then analyzes it. That's what we recommended that they do. Mm. Uh, my next question is about uh, VA medical facility construction. Managing budgets for VA medical facility construction continues to be a real area of concern for Congress, and this, your report recognizes the need for improvement. Based on your analysis, does VA have the ability to identify construction needs prior to entering into a construction contract for medical facilities? Yeah, there, there's a, th th that's a real interesting question, and I think with the implementation next month of the, the Mission Act, which would you know allow for greater access to community care issues, it'll be real interesting to see what the implications would be for VA facilities in the future. In other words, you know, how many veterans are going to continue to use VA facilities as opposed to use community care facilities? There's a, a commission that was created in order to identify long-term needs uh, of the veterans. Uh, and what, from a facility standpoint, that is just being organized right now and will be underway. We're going to look at how that's implemented over time. But I'm glad that the Congress required that, and that'll help provide a focus to make sure these things are needed properly. Uh, we found in a lot of cases in the past that the, uh, the guidance was coming from the central office, and the, and, the, and the people at the local level felt it wasn't really helpful to them, and so they were inventing their own guidance. And so as a result, you really don't have an ability to prioritize across the entire VA system, which you would need to do because you have limited budget resources. So th those are our recommendations. Thank you. Has GAO's research identified whether other federal health care provider agencies have more effective ways to identify their needs prior to entering into these construction contracts? Let me check. Yeah, no. 
No, no, we haven't. I would be happy to take a look at that, though. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Um, the GAO recommended that the Department of Health and Human Services coordinate with other federal agencies, including the VA, to improve the effectiveness of oversight for fragmented federal funding for physician graduate medical education. As you might know, Arizona suffers from physician shortages in nearly all of our counties, which leaves too many Arizonans without access to primary care doctors, mental health specialists, and it causes these unconscionable delays for our veterans. How will comprehensive reporting across programs help us better understand how many primary care physicians we need in Arizona versus how many pediatric specialists we need. Are there other areas within GME funding that you would recommend that coordination efforts be focused? Uh, well, first, uh, I think the last estimate we had or, or number on this is I think the federal government spends about $16 billion a year to support graduate medical education training. And it's really not clear what the result of that spending is and how it could be better coordinated across the different federal agencies as well. So right now, it's, it's very, like a lot of things in federal government, very decentralized. People are doing their own thing, and there's really not a lot of lessons learned out of it yet. And that's what we're suggesting is that the agencies, you know, evaluate how well it's working and how well is it's, it's meeting the needs uh, that they anticipate in the future. So right now it's not very systematic and uh, we're concerned that we're continuing to provide billions of dollars and not knowing if it's really accomplishing what we need it to accomplish. Mm. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you. Thank you.